Right. Sorry, baby. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your presence in this house, Lord. Praise God. Hear, O Israel. Is that what he said before he gave the Ten Commandments? Hear. Hear. He said, hear. I've got to tell you, it hasn't changed. Keep hearing. Keep listening. You've got a relationship with God. You have a relationship with the living God. I don't know what that does to you, but it does a lot of things to me. <laughs> that I have a relationship with a God who knows me and, and I know him. I don't know what that does to you, but it changes everything in me. That I know God, that I can open up the word and he speaks to me through it. That I can hear him in that still small voice on the inside. That he walk with me in relationship, in relationship. Praise God. I don't know what that does to you, but... It, I can tell you, it brings me undone <laughs> regularly, regularly. Hearing God is imperative, I believe. It's fellowship. In John 17 verse 3, it says, Knowing God is eternal life. Knowing God is eternal life. knowing him. I'm reminded of the prodigal son. We think the parable's about him, and it's not. It's about the other one. <laughs> it's about the other one, the one who was there all the time, doing the right thing, trying to earn his salvation. <laughs> prodigal son, he just caved in, went out, did everything wrong and said, I'm a sinner, not worthy to be your son. That's what he said to his father. He said, treat me like a servant. But the father said, no, here, put on the robe. Here's a new pair of shoes. And here's the signet ring. Giving him authority. Would you have trusted him? I wouldn't have. Good thing I'm not God. <laughs> True. I wouldn't have trusted him. You know, and God looks at every one of us in this place with the very same way that that parable of the prodigal son. He gave his inheritance because the son asked for it. That wayward son, he was a rat bag. Reminds me a bit of me sometimes. <laughs> Scallywag. He wanted his inheritance and he wanted it now. And the father split the inheritance between the two of them. Gave it to the other son as well, same time. One went and squandered it, went out with, what's the word say, riotous living. <laughs> You know what that means? It means sinning. <laughs> Full on sinning. And when he'd come to the end of his tether, he was eating in a strange land. He was eating with the pigs out in the field, <laughs> thinking, oh, my father's servants are better treated than this. So he decided to turn for home and throw himself at the mercy of the father who forgave him immediately and the son who'd stayed who was a goody two shoes started to kick up the real him rose up <laughs> i'm going to earn my way to heaven is what he was thinking <laughs> he kicked up his true nature was revealed he didn't care about sinners, about souls. 
He was only caring about himself. The father slaughtered the fattened cow for the returning son. And all the other one could do was whinge. Well, you never gave me a fattened calf. Does it remind you of anybody? <laughs> I've been a goody two-shoes all my life. And here's all these sinners pouring into, into the church now. Praise God. Who does that remind you of? Our true nature. Our true nature will get revealed. Amen. Son who was there all the time could have had anything he wanted, any time he wanted. His father would have been glad to share a fattened calf with him. Any time. But he wins. He said, you know, you never cared enough for me to share the fattened calf. Share it with me and all my friends. It's interesting, isn't it, the way it's worded in the Bible, and all my friends. He was more interested in being acclaimed by the father in front of his friends. The father was more interested in the one who was lost. Salvation. Do you know, every one of you has come to the Lord in this place, I believe. If you haven't, you get an opportunity today to get that right. Praise God. But before you were ever born, you were being knit in your mother's womb. God knew you. He had a plan for you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all there together, and your life came up before them. Before you were knit in your mother's womb, your life came up, and the Father made a plan for you, a plan where he'd send his only son to pay the price for your salvation. Glory to God. For your salvation. That plan still stands. I want to tell you, most Christians sit in churches and don't give two thoughts about that plan that's done, sins have been paid for. But they don't really believe. They don't really believe that he'll take them on. I talk to so many Christians all the time who come for ministry and the doubts in their heart are huge. Do you know that? They doubt. Just believe. That's all we have to do is just believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved and so will your house. Isn't that what the Word of God says? Then why do we doubt? I, the number of people come to me and say, I, I can't hear God. My father was dying of cancer and every bone in his body was riddled with it. They sent him home to die. They said, you've got less than two months to live. And it was, a, was it a father's day or a mother's day? But we were all together as a family. I'll never forget the day he, he let us know. And I said to my dad, I said, Dad, I said, you've got the Lord. You gave your heart to Christ three years ago. What's he say about your condition? What does he say? Because I believe when I was born again, I was born again into a relationship. The Father wanted to talk to me and I want to talk with him. And that's the thing he loves. He gets you saved. He wants to talk with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. Every one of us in this place. Praise God. I said, Lord, please show me. My dad said to me, Raph, I don't hear that well. I said, yes, you do. How many of you hear well in this place? Some of you are not going to put your hands up. Well, surrender to God, will you? <laughs> Put your hands up. Receive from him. Close your eyes, and I'm going to open up the, the well of hearing in your body right now. Close your eyes and say this to him. Lord Jesus, do you love me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
It's beautiful, isn't it, when he talks to you? What did he say to you then? Of course I love you. Silly question, yes. I love you. Do you want to know how much he loves you? Just ask him that question. <laughs> he speaks to you. You have relationship. Praise God. My dad couldn't hear that clearly until we did that. <laughs> He'd been hearing all his life. He'd been through two major wars, Spanish Civil War and Second World War. He'd been saved by the Lord, kept. And I'll never forget that day. I asked the Lord with all my kids and immediately God answered us. Do you know God wants to give you detail? Do you know that? He wants to give you detail. Praise God. You know that, Vass, don't you? You got detail last week. Detail. Words of knowledge. Detail. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Detail. All these airy fairy words of knowledge. Oh, I see a cloud and it's shaped like a dove and... Talk to God. He's real. <laughs> Set your hearts before him. You've got relationship. That's the very thing salvation has brought for you. That seed, that seed of Jesus Christ is now planted on the inside of you. And all you need to do is water it. And it's going to bring a Jesus tree out of you. You know, most Christians are so limited in the way that they can Receive what God's got to say. I know God as a miracle worker. I know the Lord as a, as a worker of miracles in my life and the lives of so many other people. I see him working in the little things. They're the things that still stagger me. He sent me on a trip. He sent me on lots of different trips over the years to do different jobs. Trips with a purpose before I leave. He says, I want you to go do this. And he'll give me the first part of the trip, but not the second or the third part. But if I'm obedient to the first thing he tells me, everything else comes. Everything else comes. And my kids knew I was going, I was, he was telling me to go to the States. And I didn't want to go. A trip five weeks away from the family and from home. And I was going and my kid said to me, Dad, you know Nike Airs are worth, you can buy them a lot cheaper in America than you can here. <laughs> can you bring us back some Nike Airs? Is it Nike Airs these days? Are they the ones? No. Anyway, my oldest girl, I think she was nine at the time, wasn't she? No, middle one, Exana. She was nine. Then we had two younger ones, three and four I think it was at the time. And Alexander said, Dad, I want a pair of Nike Airs. I said, here, here's a piece of cardboard. Draw your foot on there and, and uh, tell me what colour you want. <laughs> and the other two little ones, he said, oh, I want Nike Airs. He said, that's what they're called, Dad. The other two said, can we have some trainers, Nike trainers? So draw your feet on that piece of cardboard. So I had the sizes right, then I had the colours right. <laughs> Nike ears were blue, Nike trainers, one wanted pink, the other one wanted mauve. <laughs> the littlest one was the mauve, wasn't she? So I stuffed it at the bottom of my suitcase and I was five weeks away. And the day before, I'm about to fly back to Australia. We've been ministering in New Jersey in Italy, we, we ministered in a lot of different places with a round-the-world ticket. And I ended up at an Italian man's house the last two or three days and we ministered to his family and his family got set free. He was a wonderful man, had a very staunch spirit. His yes was his yes, his no was no. <laughs> and... Uh, I was down in his garden that morning. I was just spending a bit of time with the Lord before I was about to jump on the plane. And he came down and he said, 
He used to call me Silas. I don't know why he called me Silas, but he called me Silas. He'd go, Silas, my wife and I were praying last night here, and he handed me an envelope. And uh, he said, the Lord told me to give you this. I said, oh. So I opened up the envelope. There's a $100 note there. I said, mate, I don't need this. <laughs> he said, you do. He said, God told me you do. And then the Holy Spirit says to me, yes, you do. <laughs> he said, you've got to get some shoes for your kids. <laughs> you promised. Oh, he keeps your word for you even when you forget. <laughs> he will keep your word for you when you can't remember. Praise God. It's true. So don't open your mouth too, too quickly. <laughs> but what, what happened was now I've got three hours before I go to the airport, I'm going to be late. So I said, oh, my God. Now I've got 10 American dollars in my pocket and he's just given me 100. Any math mathematician in the house? 110? <laughs> I said, can you, can you send me to the nearest shopping centre? I've got to buy some shoes for my children. He said, I'll send my boy. So his boy jumps in the car. He takes me to almost like a big Marion store, you know, a huge shopping centre. And the Holy Spirit, I'm not listening to him now. I'm, I'm set on a shopping mission, right? And I go into this store and I can't find Nike anywhere. I can find British something or others. I can find Puma. I can find all sorts of makes. And the Holy Spirit says, Raph, stop and listen to me. He said, Nike, don't market in the supermarkets. <laughs> Do you want to hear God like that? Because he, 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 you belong to him. Your life is his. I said, yep, okay, I'm listening. What do I do? He said, go to the back of the store. He said, go down the elevators. And then he said, start walking to the back wall straight in front of the elevators. So I started doing that. And as I got to the back wall, there was a like a bookcase. Wouldn't have been much bigger than that, and about that high with three shelves on it. And it had all different types of wild-looking shoes, ballet pumps for little kids, all kids' shoes. Ballet pumps, um, soccer boots, all tiny shoes for kids. And there, in the middle of the whole lot, there's some Nike trainers. <laughs> one pink, one mauve. I'm bawling by this time <laughs> as I get my cardboard out of my back pocket and check the size. They were perfect, weren't they? Oh, my God. And now he says, now get out to the mall. He said, and go to the sports store. So I'm going to the, to the teller first, and I try to pay for these shoes, and I get both pairs for 50 American dollars, $25 a pair. I'm blown out. I get out in the mall, and he said, now go right. 100 yards is a sports store. He said, right out the front on a plastic pedestal is your other daughter's shoes. I'm telling you, God speaks like that. Have you got a relationship with God? The prodigal son did, even though he wasn't home, even though he was a sinner, he still knew the father. He knew his heart. And the father's heart's still the same. And the father's heart's the same for you and for me. And every time you ask something, it's recorded in heaven. He doesn't forget, but we do. He often says to me, can you remember how you asked? And I say, no. And so he reminds me. And if I ask according to the word of God, I was after something. I was after $5,000 once to buy the little huts down the back there. 
that's what I still owed on them. I was away preaching somewhere and I asked him, we were talking direct, he was telling me what to do about the meetings. I said, what stopped the money, Lord? And he said, you have, your fear stopped the money. <laughs> he said, I can't bless your fear, I can only bless your faith. I can only bless your faith. You want to remember this word. <laughs> because without faith you can't please God. It's true. The God I serve is a God who lives in me, talks to me, walks with me. I don't know who you serve, but I know who Jesus is. <laughs> I know what he died for. He paid the price for me so I could walk with a good conscience before him, even though I'm a sinner. Can you understand that? Because I keep running back to him. I don't care. I look at David. He's my model. <laughs> Jesus is my model. <laughs> Amen? Jesus is my model. He was a, without sin. He was without sin so that I could walk freely here on earth. <laughs> His blood paid the price. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you know, there are phenomena that are going to happen shortly in churches all over this country, and people are going to question them because they haven't walked with him and don't know him. Or they know about him, they've invited him into their heart, but they've never walked with him and built their relationship. You can't earn your way into heaven. It's by grace and grace alone. You just want to know what the jobs are you need to do here. That's true. That's what you need to know. What do you want me to do? Can I I'll just go to the book of Revelation. I'm sorry. I wasn't going to preach on this, but he's just putting it on my heart right now. Can we go to the book of Revelation? I don't know, I'll tell you in a sec. Uh, okay, try uh, chapter 19. Hmm. Start at the beginning. After these things I heard, actually the book of Revelation is an incredible book. Everywhere in that book of Revelation you're going to hear, I heard, I heard, I heard. You getting this? Is this going in? I heard. What are you hearing? I heard. After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honour and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication and he's avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Well, that's comfort, isn't it? Again they said, Alleluia, Alleluia, her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah." Then a voice came from the throne. Then a voice came from where? Praise God. Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And here we are again. And I heard as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sounds of many waters and the sounds of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. And here's the verses I want to get to. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Do you realise, I find this hard getting my head around, he says I'm a bride, 
but I think I'm a bloke. I'm a bride. But I'm a man. I don't know how that works. I, actually, I do. If I keep asking, there's neither man nor woman up in heaven. Okay? You've been made in his image, spirit to spirit. So that's why. But anyway, we're going to a wedding feast. And it says, his wife has made herself ready. Sorry, girls. <laughs> Girls, I'm saying girls, okay. You're his wife, the church, you're his wife. We're making ourselves ready before God. Do you realise that? You're making yourselves ready before God. Do you realise that? You're making yourselves ready before God and to you, it's granted fine linen. Now when you read about different types of cloth in the Bible, it speaks of we've, we've been clothed from above. Amen. You don't get clothed from ground up, you get clothed from heaven down. <laughs> and it says fine linen, fine linen, no sweat material, not wool, fine linen. Fine linen represents no effort on your behalf, like that prodigal son. <laughs> no effort. He just walked back straight into the father's home. Do you hear me? No effort. No effort. Linen. He's dressing us. We're dressing ourselves through the righteous acts that we do. So you're not doing righteous acts to earn your salvation. You're doing them because that's our job here on earth, to get others saved, to populate heaven. You've been called for this one thing. Oh, some people say, but that's the evangelist's job, brother. Well, I'll tell you, it's every one of our jobs, brother. <laughs> Amen, and sister. It's every one of us. You know what a righteous act is? When you hear God say something to you, to go and act on that or into that and you go and do it and you'll see the power of God start to flow in your life because of your obedience to him. Oh, some people don't believe this is the gospel. Well, I've got to tell you, it is the gospel. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. You've been called for a purpose. You're saved. You've given your heart to Christ. You want to honour him. You want to bring people to glory, to get to know who it is that you've, you've got in your heart. Oh, <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. All I can say to you is if you hear what God says and do it, then you're going to open up the miraculous. That prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Come on earth as it is in heaven. You need to see that. You need to see it. You need to experience that. You need to experience God walking, leading you walking through you. You've been called to do these things. You're getting yourself ready for a wedding feast by doing them. You're getting dressed for service. Half of us haven't got enough material for a bikini. <laughs> it's true because we don't do anything for him. We just warm the pew on Sunday. We read the scripture. You know, the Pharisees used to read the scriptures. And he said, this is not doing you any good unless you act upon them. Unless you act upon them. 
All things pertaining to life have been given to you, Peter said. That by his great and precious promises, you become partakers of the very nature of God. He's not only growing you on the inside, he's growing you on the outside. People will see the change in you. Isn't that right, Rowdy? Okay, so behave yourself. <laughs> Sorry, mate, word of knowledge. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. I'm not going to go anymore. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. He wants to speak to you. He wants to speak directly to you. These scriptures... To her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. It begs to ask, what are righteous acts? You need to know what a righteous act is, don't you? Because you're getting dressed when you're acting out righteous acts. All I know is that every time that I've had a need, I don't have to worry about money. I don't ever preach about money, but I'm going to, I'm going to share something with you. Actually, Belly, you were with me this day. We were in Singapore. Can you remember that day? We got invited to preach at a Indonesian church, but they wanted to test us first. Can you remember that? Remember that, that old man that turned up? They wanted to test us first in this Indo church before they let us loose on the big church with thousands of people there. So they invited us to go to a healing meeting in the middle of the week where there was about 15 people. So we turned up beautifully and we started preaching and an old man came in and he had a young man helping him. He was, he was a bit doddery, this old fella. But he walked in and the young man had brought him in and sat him on a seat and so I asked the Lord, I said, what's this dude doing here, Lord? <laughs> what's this man need? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to share a testimony because sometimes God speaks to me through words of knowledge throughout my testimonies. If I'm telling a story, then I'm asking the Lord, this is something we've lived. This is a testimony of your glory, what you did. What's this for? He said, this is relating to something that man there needs. So this old man walks in and he starts telling me about him through a testimony of mine, the testimony of my dad, which had just started a little while ago. My dad was fully healed of cancer when he forgave someone from the Spanish Civil War. The Lord gave me the word of knowledge that in the Civil War my father had to forgive a sergeant from the Spanish Foreign Legion I didn't even know there was such a thing as a Spanish Foreign Legion. I've heard of the French one. <laughs> but my dad had something against his sergeant and he carried it for 50 years in his heart here, caused his problem, never forgave. The minute he forgave, he was instantly healed and we took him to the hospital, got him checked out. They, couldn't, they asked him to come back, can we check you out, Mr Shaw? What have you done? He said, don't worry about it, I had to forgive someone. It's okay. <laughs> and, and Jesus healed me. And so there we are in this meeting in Singapore and the Lord's telling me, tell that testimony, that old man that's walked in, that's his problem. And I want to tell you it's the problem of some people now. I'm looking at you and I can't help myself. I'm getting stuff and I don't want to. Praise God. There's two prostrate problems in this house right now. He wants to heal them. He wants to heal them. Okay, you don't have a chance a second. You're a good man. This testimony of my dad, we spoke it in that little house meeting, that test they put us through. And um, this old man got up 
He was about to leave before I spoke this testimony out. He got up and I said to him, I said, I wouldn't go if I were you, mate. I said, you came here to be healed. Is that right, Alan? I said, I'd stay because you need to hear a little story. You need to hear the story of what happened to my dad when he got healed. And this man sat down and he listened and next thing he's on the floor. The power of God's hit him and uh, I said he wants to heal you the same thing. He got up, he was just totally transformed. He was crying, he was transformed. He came up to shake my hand. Now I needed some money at the time. I didn't tell anybody. I mean, we used to travel with nothing at all in our pockets. Isn't that right, Billy? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. And I needed some money. I need, I had some stuff I had to do when I got home. And this man put his hands in my hand and there was a piece of paper there. And he looked at me. He said, thank you so much. I said, sorry, mate, I don't do this for money. I don't want your money. I didn't know what was in there. He said, you've got to take it. He said, I've just been healed. I said, okay. Put it in my pocket. And he went up to you. He shook your hand, put a note in your pocket. He was so thankful for this ministry. And I said, you told me after, you said, don't lose what you put in your pocket. You must have had a look, did you? They were two $1,000 notes, Singaporean <laughs> notes. God met our needs in the funniest way. I'm telling you this because supernaturally God moves, okay? He knew our needs. He knew this man's needs. He knew that man was going to meet our needs before we ever knew. <laughs> he works in peculiar ways. Amen? Let him know what your requests are. Don't give people hints. Don't hint to people what you need. Ask the Lord. He hears you. He hears you. He he he's hearing you. He's hearing you. Just put your hand on your throat right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. There's the power of God coming through your own hand, even now. He hears you already. See, you've determined now is the time. You've put up with this for too long. Thank you, Lord. Faith is now. Healing comes now. He hears you. Make your request be known to him. He's the one that answers the prayer, not me. Not me. Him. Oh, he's here. He's healing your neck right now. He's healing that. He's healing that. You, you won't have that problem again. The power of God is like a fire in your throat right now. Is that correct? Can you feel that? You receive it. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Somebody else here with the same problem. Flemmy throat. Who's that? Who is that? Just if that's you, receive it now. That one? Here, yeah, huh? Good on you, Ray. Who Ray? I'm oh, sorry, oh, I can't help but joke around. <laughs> Praise God. He does miraculous things. The kingdom of heaven appears here on earth because we ask, because we ask, because we ask, because we ask. He's heard your prayer. He's heard your prayer. Approvals. I see stamps of approval coming to you. I see the hand of God with a document in front of him and he's got a stamp and it's approved. You know what that's about right now. Amen. He approves. He approves. Praise God. Oh, Lord. The prodigal came to where he knew every need had been met. 
back to his father. He said, look, I'm not worthy to be your son anymore, but I am worthy to serve you. And the father said, what? And puts the son's new robe on him, gives him a ring and says, yeah, you have all authority in my house. That's not a servant, that's a son. What do the royal family call it? They call it the firm, <laughs> the business. Amen. Sons run the firm. <laughs> and he gives him new sandals, which speaks of him walking properly from that time on. <laughs> We've got to get serious with God. I tell you, we cry out for a revival. The revival's in you and me. And you've got to let it out. And when you set your heart to fully be revived and say, I'm all yours, not just this bit, nor the other. The whole lot of me belongs to you, Lord. Give me some marching orders, Father. What do I do? I've got to tell you, over the years, I've been given many, many assignments, overseas assignments, when I've had no money, nothing. And I mean nothing, no credit cards, nothing. Do you know what it is to go and leave a country and go to some third world countries with nothing? You don't get offerings like you do in churches here. You have to depend on him. But you know, he cares about the sparrow. How much more is he going to look after you? If you're on his business, his business, his business. Praise God. Sorry, brother. I'm, the Spirit of God speaking to me. He says he's put a teaching gift on your life for him. You study the word. I see you studying the word of God. But he says, I've put a teaching gift on your life. Start moving in it. Hand it over to him. It'll be multiplied incredibly. And opportunities are going to be opened up to you. And are now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Every one of you has a relationship. <laughs> Develop that. Forget everything else. <laughs> Develop that. Father, I think I've had enough. I think I've had more than enough. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Your situation is about to be finalised, says the Lord. The judge is seeing in your favour, says the Holy Spirit. In your favour, and it's coming quick. It's been drawn out, says the Spirit of God, but I've heard your cries. And in your favour. It's being poured out. Is that what you're waiting on? No, it's on its way. It's on its way. Praise God. I think we've had enough teaching. Can we get communion out? Who's doing that? Thank you, Lord. I can't, Lou, get out there. You said you'd sing. You said you'd do communion today. <laughs> this is my brother, actually. <laughs> he's, he's had to put up with me 74 years. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and, he's, and he survived. <laughs> he's older than me, by the way. <laughs> you got a testimony you want to give straight after communion and then you can close up in prayer. Can we do that? Yeah. Good. Um, thank you, Lord. Yeah, get him a mic. He'll need it. No, no, he, he's got a pretty loud voice. <laughs> no, yeah, get him a mic, Ricky. Uh, Yeah. 
Is it? Ah, oh, actually, we've got to unravel that. Hey, go on, they got, a, they got another one. Too late. Yeah, all unhooked. How, you might have to sit on the stage, so it's a bit short. Here you go, buddy. When you get here, it's... Thanks, I got one. Huh. Thank you, Lord. You know, there are many phenomena in, in the kingdom and God works in ways that you may never have ever experienced before. But I want to tell you it's coming and it's coming quick. We've had glimpses over the years when he send us, sends us on little jobs. We've seen the power of God in so many different areas of people's lives and our own. And he wants you to ask for fruit, heavenly fruit. You'll know when it's God because there will always be good fruit. Too many people judge things too quickly. Can you imagine if you lost an axe head and he speaks to it and it floats? <laughs> Do you believe that? It's something that's actually happened. And it's been recorded in the Bible. Now that's a heavenly act here on earth. Amen. Your needs being met, those shoes for my children. That's a heavenly act. The other side of the world, exactly what my kids have asked for, and there they are waiting for me to collect them. <laughs> and the money to do it when I only had 10 American dollars in my pocket. By the way, my oldest daughter's shoes were 60 American dollars. <laughs> 110 American dollars, just in case you doubt. <laughs> when he does things, he does them and he knows everything. Amen. Praise God. He'll send you to places in the most dangerous places in the world. And if you're trusting him fully, you'll see the hand of God and you'll be so protected, you'll know that you know that you'll know. Do you know what that does for your faith? It shoots it through the roof. Every time I've asked for something, and I'm, you know, it sounds like I'm always asking for things, but a lot of the time it's for other people's healings. Every time I ask for something and I see it come to pass, you know what that does for my faith? You know the thing that I disturbs me most is when we get people come in here and they're crippled and they walk out the same way. Do you know that? That, that should be a concern to us. We're God's people. They're the righteous acts we need to move on. When you see someone in need, go and pray for them. That's all you've got. And listen. Listen to what it is you need to pray. Hear him. Hear him, O Israel. Hear him, O God's people. Hear him, church. Hear him. That's a, that, there's your title today. Amen. Some of you need to build your faith up. And this communion table we come to today is God's provision for your healing. He said, as often as you do this, remember me. Remember him, who it is you're coming to. Hear what he's got to say. Knowing him is eternal life. As often as you do this, I've got a bit of a theory that one of the most often things I do is to eat. <laughs> Amen. Now I know I bless my food before we eat at home. And I remember who it is that's blessing it. I remember who it is that's providing it. I remember who it is has allowed me to be healthy enough to eat it. Hear him. 
Joan, he's got plans for you. He's got plans for you. Plans to heal you. Plans to set you free. Plans. He's spoken them to you. Take hold. Take hold of those plans. Take hold of those plans. Anchor. Anchor yourself in those plans. <laughs> you, can, you can partake this, your healings in these things today. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Mm -mm. Just partake of your communion when you're ready. We all know what the bread represents, his body, wounded for us. And the grape represents the blood of Christ. Through the blood, your soul is saved. Through the blood, your soul is restored. Through the blood, your soul is being healed. Do you know what soul represents? Emotions, will. Feelings. Most of your letter, your feelings, not your spirit. Reverse that. Hand it back to him. Let the spirit guide you. You know when you pray in tongues, revelation comes. When revelation comes, you start to hear God with the clarity. Amen. Pray in the spirit. Pray much in the spirit. Paul used to do it more than anybody else. Pray in the spirit. Let revelation flow through you. Praise God. Some of you have been baptized in the Spirit, pray in tongues and don't use it. What a, what a loss. I want to tell you the story as we finish of a young man who used to sit at the back of a meeting we did for 10 years down at the Salvos at Marion. Every Wednesday we'd meet, do healing meetings. And he'd sit at the back, he was like a vegetable. In fact, he was worse than a vegetable. <laughs> Is that, well, shoe fits, mate. <laughs> he was like a veggie. And we used to preach about praying in tongues and the spirit. And one day the light bulb went on. Only took four years. <laughs> and he started doing it fervently. Not, not an hour, not two hours, sometimes eight hours a day he did it for a few months. And the transformation is here now. <laughs> Total change. Total change just by praying in the Spirit. Is that right? Is that correct? It is amazing. What, what's the street praying in tongues? Uh, what's the street praying in tongues? <laughs> Just answer the question, my God. <laughs> I can't believe it. Give him an inch, you take two pages. <laughs> Have a talk to Chris after the meeting. His, his testimony is amazing. Amen. Eric, Eric is going to close up. Sorry, Eric, I just I get waylaid. <laughs> you got a mic there, Eric? Can you take over? Bless you. <laughs> uh, g'day. Hello, hello. Uh, g'day, everyone. I've just come to give my testimony, and it's. Uh, it's about what, something that happened yesterday, or it happened probably a week ago now. I, um, well, this is this is a bit funny, really. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Hello again. Uh, 
my name's Eric. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> but anyway, I just got a testimony about something that happened, um, you know, and, and it's a moment in time where, and people that know me here would, would know that, uh, by crikey's, how many jobs has this man had? Well, <laughs> I applied for another job because uh, some, something, um, something happened in my other job. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, happy with the money and, uh, and then I left that job and ended up into a job that was actually paying worse money. But anyway, I applied for this job online and I thought, I'll do it anyway, but there was something stopping me and that, that, was, that was my past, you know. That was my pass, and I applied for it anyway. And then I got a phone call and uh, went in for an interview. And, and yesterday I, I went out on, on, a, on a job uh, with, with uh, it wasn't actually a job. I just, you know, said I'm more than happy to go out for a day, see what it's like. And, and actually the truck broke down and uh, 16 hours later. But there, there was a man that... I went out with, he, was, uh, he wasn't a Christian and he swore like a trooper and I told him how God changed my life and, and my wife's life and, and how God's just given us so much since then. And, and do you know what? That man didn't swear for the whole rest of the day, you know. Yeah, it, it was, he, just, he just kept his, his tongue still and, and do you know what? You know, my, my testimony today really is about what God's done for me in my life. You know, since accepting Jesus on that cross, in that moment in time, my past has been forgotten. You know, when you look in the mirror when you're driving, you're looking in the wrong direction. Forget about your past. God's got a future for us all. John 10.10 10 says so. I've come to give you life and give it abundantly, you know. <laughs> and I've just got, I've just, you know, just my, my testimony today is is about giving. You see that bucket over there? Some of us, like our sister over here, have actually jumped into the well of life giving water, you know. And they they are just so blessed, you know, missionaries and some people that, that are just drenched in the spirit by the work that they do. You know, just, just like a spider on the wall. There's, you know, there's a spider on the wall and he's, he's doing all this work to make his web. And then this one spider, one spider does something different. He gets up in the morning, he's finished his web, he worked all night to make that web and he gets up and he's he's got more than enough food to feed himself and do you know what this spider he did something very different than all the other spiders he decided to give his food to the other spiders and do you know what when the rock falls through his web ecclesiastics 321 says who knows whether the spirit of an animal goes up or down. But I'm sure that one spider will be living in the king's palace in the corner of the wall, you know? <laughs> and yeah, uh, I just, you know, as, as we come to put our hand in the bucket today, that's a moment in time that we can say, thank you, God, for what you've given me this week. And thank you, you know, it's about, it's, it's about, <laughs> Romans 12 2. He sacrificed his life for us. He went through pain so we didn't have to. He went through all that pain. He went through all that suffering. He done it all for us so we don't have to go through pain anymore. Sure, things are going to happen, but what does it do? It makes you grow. It makes you grow. You know, each, you know, no temptation has come to man that hasn't happened to other people. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. You know, and each, each time I'm, I'm, I can just, I can truly say that when things happen to me, I just get so anxious and I just, ah, you know, so I'm not saying, wow, I'm definitely not, not perfect, not perfect, but you know what? I'm growing and maturing, and, and, and it's all thanks to God, you know. I just take it one day at a time, 
And and today, just when when you when you when you put your hand in that bucket, you know we've got such a good servant leader here, Raf and and Bricky, and 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 we really have. We're so blessed, you know. To he's saying go go go, but it's true, and that's from my heart. And I'm sure that many other people think the same. Anyway, that was it. Thank you. Bye bye.